Hey guys, uh, Rai Rai Magai here. You can call me Ryan. Um, today is Tuesday, April the 5th, and uh, you've tuned into a very special edition of Lost Tube. Uh, for those that are new here, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is a safe space where we talk about stitching and knitting sometimes, sewing sometimes, uh, just kind of fiber fiber arts in general. Um, my cat Stanley might make an appearance. Uh, he was actually just up here <laughs> not that long ago, sleeping on his little office chair. So anyways, crazy times. <laughs> For my returning friends, uh, welcome back. Um, so yeah, it's been a hot minute. I think it's been about a month since my last um, floss tube video and a lot's happened. Uh, I've been kind of a little bit too busy though to do any kind of serious filming. So I've got a lot of stuff I want to talk about and I think maybe the best way to handle this is to break it down into a few more manageable chunks. Um, I uh, I promised myself I'd keep my videos kind of under the 40 minute mark and so far that's been working. Um, so I'm going to try to keep that up. I think, um, anyways, I just, I just want to say thank you again. Uh, thank you for watching and for liking and for subscribing and for tolerating my ums and my, anyway, I say a lot of anyway, <laughs> anyways, anyway, I think instead of, um, uh, anyway is my new kind of segue. So we can maybe turn this video into a drinking game and uh well i'm gonna drink my coffee but <laughs> i said that this was a special edition and uh for my floss tube number four and why you ask well stitch north yay pew pew insert fireworks here so <laughs> uh yeah sorry for my excitement i know some of you have commented on how how calm and relaxing it is to listen to me or to watch my i guess my boring videos so i'm a little bit excited this time uh like i said it's tuesday we had a retreat uh, on the weekend so april 1st 2nd 3rd um yeah, so I, I want to kind of recap my experience there as a kind of a semi-beginner stitcher and definitely um, new to the cross-stitching community and especially new to retreats. Um, since this was my first retreat too, I, I before I wanted to film a video about how I was packing and prepping for the trip, I was trying to do some research and couldn't find very much. So I, I wanted to create a little standalone video on uh, how I prepared or what it was that I packed. And unfortunately, I didn't get time to film that before the retreat. Um, but it's after now. And uh, actually, it might have worked out for the better because now I can talk about what worked for me, um, what didn't work for me, and what I might include uh, next time on the next uh, Stitch North retreat. So yeah, have a look for that. I guess I'm going to call it a floss tube number five or maybe a how to pack or how to prep. Anyways, we'll find out. Uh, then finally, I'm going to rewind the clocks a little bit. Like I said, I think my last floss tube was March the 5th and I did manage to get a bit of stitching done, a little bit of knitting even. And uh, so I uh, would like to share some of that with you as well. Um, you'll have to apologize. I just took some notes here and um, I'll be referring to them now and again. I I mean, this past weekend was so packed and so full. I was at, at night, like no joke, ask Ellen, <laughs> no joke. I was lying awake, staring at the ceiling. My brain just could not shut off. I could not stop processing everything that I was seeing and listening to and experiencing. And uh, yeah, it was it was quite a packed experience. And uh, so I want to be sure that I'm not missing anything, at least anything that was that was relevant to my experience. Um, I I don't really know what to say or or how to begin with it. I've watched. Um, few kind of Nashville Expo 
um, videos as kind of reviews and summaries and recaps. Um, I think it was Brenda and the Serial Starter channel. Um, they talked about, oh, they had a show and tell at a retreat. And I got to say, I was so freaked out at the, the quality, like the level of stitching that was happening and going on there. I, I was beyond impressed. And honestly, I found it a little bit intimidating bringing, you know, my little stitching to the retreat, but it ended up being fine, really. I mean, there was just such a range and variety of uh, stitching styles and skills and levels and, and ages and... Uh, and yeah, I, I really felt very comfortable and right at home with my level of stitching. And um, if you're thinking about going to a retreat and you're new, kind of like me, then then you should feel comfortable too. It, it's going to be great and you're going to have a great time. So yeah, so I wasn't sure how to begin this particular floss tube edition about the retreat. So I thought I might start with a who, what, where, when, why kind of concept and use those questions to sort of work as a framework around um, any information that I have to share or stories that I want to tell, uh, kind of a springboard for uh, some discussion. So um, that being said, uh, let's talk about the what. So what is Stitch North? <laughs> well, if you are watching me, then you almost 100% um, know Ellen Reed of Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. We are friends. I have appeared on her channel once, and I do hope that uh, she gets to appear on my channel. So please help me convince her. And uh, anyways, if you know Ellen, then you probably also know Caroline McNeil of um, Off the Grid Needle Arts fame and um, the <laughs> chief executive officer uh, and president of Evertote um, does gorgeous bags and uh, she is the exclusive retailer of the Leo and Roxy over dyed flosses and fabrics. And um, she also has been offering the most beautiful charts, uh, mostly from Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to get into that uh, just in a second. But anyways, Caroline, in her crazy wisdom, decided to host her very first cross stitching retreat up here in Canada. And um, it was scheduled for April uh, 2020. Yep. Yep. That was two years ago. And uh, I think as you might be aware, we um, experienced some issues <laughs> um, starting in 2020 that necessitated um, a couple of rescheduling, unfortunately. Um, fortunately, Stars were aligned and we finally managed to gather uh, this past weekend, uh, April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty amazing. I think after two years of anticipation and dealing with the lockdowns and isolation and more lockdowns and a couple of false starts, it finally happened. Um, yeah, so it was, it was three days. It was over the weekend, like I said, um, April 1st, 2nd, 3rd. Uh, it was here in Brampton. And uh, so I guess we're going to get into the where. So it was in Brampton. Uh, it was hosted at a hotel, the Courtyard Marriott in Brampton. It was, it was a great location. It was accessible to the airport. And uh, I was, I was so impressed with the number of people that had traveled far and wide. Uh, to attend. Um, I met uh, people from, from all over the country and uh, all over the U.S. as well. Really, it was, it was so inspiring to see all of these people uh, come together. You know, for many, it was their first time in the area, and I think it was a real testament to Caroline's character. Um, just how many people enjoy her and love her and uh, love what she does. And, uh, yeah, they just wanted to be a part of that and bask in the glory and the glow. Uh, you know, I got to meet her in person for the first time. And uh, I can assure you with 100% accuracy that um, 
that she delivered and and the weekend did not disappoint and she did not disappoint uh, she is as authentic and genuine as uh, as you could imagine uh, so i talked a bit about the what i talked a bit about the where i talked a bit about the when um a little bit about the who uh, so maybe we can expand on the kind of uh, fellow stitchers that were there I, 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 again, I was just in awe at the volume of people who gathered, uh, came together in, in fellowship to have this special bond. Uh, I could let you know, as an introvert, I, I would personally have a very difficult time making the decision to come to a retreat alone. And uh, it's not easy for a whole weekend long function. It's not easy, uh, at least for me, to be around strangers and in a strange town. You know, it's, um, it, it was difficult for me and in, in general. And uh, so I, I really like huge shout out and massive kudos to you stitchers who traveled far and wide to uh, spend the weekend here um, in Ontario. You know, now that I think about it, I, I actually have done, I have done something similar where I, I didn't know anyone. Um, there, there was a retreat, it was a dog sled, a nine day winter dog sledding and camping retreat in Northern Ontario. I, I didn't know a soul there. And uh, that summer I actually spent five days on a camel trek in a desert, uh, in the Negev desert in Israel. I didn't know a soul there. Both completely different experiences and I didn't regret a second of it. I, I treasured them both deeply, those experiences. And uh, and I know that I will uh, from Stitch North too. You know, I think social media has uh, definitely made it easier to connect with people uh, with this global pandemic. Um, it's kind of forced all of us um, through lockdowns and isolation to reach out to other people virtually. And uh, the retreat was a perfect opportunity to meet face to face the people that uh, or the community that you've built over the past few years um, with fellow stitchers and uh, you know, it was a powerful thing to witness, and uh, you've got 175 people with the shared interest um, coming together uh, who's been deprived for so long, um, you know, and, and this retreat was a perfect opportunity to meet in person uh, someone who you only known through Facebook or through Instagram likes and comments, and, uh, you know, it was a really powerful thing to witness to see 175 people um, with this mutual um, thread in common and you know, and this retreat was a perfect opportunity for um, people to meet in person those that you are friends with on Facebook or uh, who you follow on Instagram you've never met before and um, we've been deprived of this kind of interaction for so long. Um, you know, it, it was really so wonderful and magical to see everyone coming together. Um, you, you could just feel the energy. It, it was really quite electric and, and palpable. And I was uh, so, so happy and honored to be a, a part of that experience. You know, in fact, it took me almost the entire morning of the first day to just kind of calm down and stop vibrating and start stitching. Uh, you know, in general, I'm I'm not the best in crowds, and uh, you know, even if if it's a situation where I know everyone, you know, my electrons were just completely firing over time. And uh, it was a massive overstimulation of my senses. And I, I'm fairly confident that I wasn't the only one experiencing that. And plus, I've also never stitched outside of my own environment anymore. I mean, or, 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 or ever. I, I stitched once at, once at Ellen's 
and um and yeah so this was a completely new experience for me on so many different levels uh so yeah it took me a while to kind of set up my space and figure out the lay of the land and what's going on and uh did i pick the right projects and did i pack everything and where do i put this and where do i put that and what do i do uh just organizing my whole space and so i think you know i'm going to actually talk a little bit about that in in my kind of packing and prepping video so i'll i'll revisit that in that video uh, oh so talking about space um someone in the stitch north facebook group had asked if we're going to be assigned a table or tables or if uh, we're going to be um, at the same location throughout the whole weekend stitching with the same group of people and uh, people said absolutely not you're free to move around stitch where you want um, sit with who you want uh, you don't need to sit in the same spot every day and uh, you definitely weren't logged in or committed uh, to a particular table and you know some people stayed put um, I, like I didn't stitch anywhere else. I stayed at my table. We were table number four. And, um, I, I think that many people did. We also walked around a lot and got inspiration and joy seeing what everyone else was stitching and to see their configurations and setups. Um, and then, then there were also other people who floated every day. Uh, they took all their stitching stuff or they took just their little frame and their stitching and, um, they they floated. It was it was awesome. So we were really kind of free to do whatever we wanted and whatever we felt comfortable with. So personally, I I found a certain safety and security um, staying place with my own peeps at table number four, and uh, so I'll I'll just work my way around the table. Um, to my right, we had uh, Nikki from from Whitby. And then next to her, we had Gwyneth who drove up for across or down from Ottawa. And then next to her, we had, uh, Jody Trixie tricycle. Please, please check her channel out. She, she's so engaging. And I love, I really literally love everything. She stitches, uh, everything she showed. I'm like writing down information. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want to stitch it. Uh, I want to own it. Uh, yeah, I, I think that was happening throughout the course of uh, the weekend with pretty much everyone. And uh, so next to Jody was Yvonne. And I again, you know, people coming far and wide. Yvonne came all the way up from Arizona. And full of admiration, she, she didn't know anyone. And she was the most incredible butterfly floating from table to table, sitting and enjoying everyone's company. Um, we were we were encouraged to bring some items, uh, some finishes that we might want to share. And she had this great role of all of her uh, finished projects. And uh, people just loved her company and loved her projects. It was, uh, it was, her, her taste was pretty specific. It was a lot of sort of Mandela inspired, not a lot of samplers, uh, not a lot of historical work. Um, it was um, to just think ink circles and her sense of color was, was absolutely inspiring. Very sort of that bare degree, bluey, greeny, bronze, copper effect. And uh, again, I think I've added maybe four or five stitches that she's used already to my to my um, shopping cart. So, so in addition to all of the stitching that people brought, uh, something else that kind of surprised me, but I guess really it shouldn't have, were the the sheer volume of snacks. <laughs> I mean, our table was, um, you know. If I can insert some pictures, I'll I'll do so right here or or right here. Anyway, they'll be they'll be somewhere. But just the volume of snacks that that everyone was bringing. There's this mountain, this stash in the center of every table. It was generally uh, kind of more energy related. So kind of say sugar and carb focused. Um, 
Nikki did actually go across the street to a Costco and was kind enough to pick up this big party tray of raw vegetables. And we were like, what are those? I mean, we've been eating coffee crisp and Smarties and caramels and licorice all weekend. So it's like, oh, is this, is this a tomato? I think it's a tomato. Is this a tomato? So... So we appreciated um, we appreciated Nikki bringing that for us. So, so I do I do encourage you if if you haven't been on a retreat before, maybe. And again, I'll talk about this in my pack and prep video. Um, maybe think about what you're going to be using to sustain yourself while you're sitting uh, and stitching. Uh, try to think of some healthy options because I'm I'm telling you. I woke up so bloated from all the salt uh, and and hydrate. Bring a water bottle. Uh, they had uh, coffee and tea and water available for us. And uh, yeah, yeah. Make sure you drink drink a lot of water. Think of it. I mean, we've been training for how long for this retreat? It's really like a marathon stitching, and marathon runners prepare. So you need to pack your Gatorade or your water or your favorite teas, just anything you can to kind of replenish um, and refuel. Uh, one of the other wonderful things to witness and to be a part of was just the sheer volume of stitchy kindness everywhere. It, it truly was overwhelming. And I think because um, it's been so long since people have come together, um, people meeting each other for the first time, people um, meeting again who haven't seen each other in years. It was uh, just these wild and crazy gestures and offerings and gifts flying back and forth. And, uh, you know, it really was overwhelming. And I can say with... Um, 100% truth and honesty um, that the best stitchy kindness I received was um, compliments about my floss tube channel. You know, I it, honestly, it, it didn't really occur to me that people present at the retreat would actually be be watching this and would actually know me. And, uh, but, but there were people who, did, who who watched this channel and and they did like what they see and uh, and they told me and honestly I've I've never received such a such a flood of attention um, at any one time it meant so much to me and I I really was was very overwhelmed so thank you I'm I'm truly grateful yeah it it, it was truly overwhelming. Um, it, it was also so nice to put faces to the comments and um, just to know that that the view counter isn't really just a number and that it wasn't just bots or something, but, but it was actual stitchers. And uh, in a way, I think having that knowledge makes this experience easier for me. Um, just to know that that on the other side of the lens there that there are people um, that you're there, that there are live stitchers there who um, who watch. And uh, so in a way that I'm, I'm kind of talking to you and uh, that makes the experience a little more personal and a little less anonymous. So I'm not just sh sh shouting into this dark and empty void. And uh, thank you for that. I, I couldn't have asked for a better kind of stitchy kindness. Mm. A few a few other things uh, that I wanted to share. I've got a pile right here next to me. Um, oh yeah, so talking about um, talking about Yvonne and her love of ink circles designs and charts uh, she graciously gave to me uh, a project that she had stitched and so she she passed along the chart for uh oh I just noticed I thought it I just thought it was flirtily but it's actually called four 
Italy. And um, I, I don't know what the play in words is. I mean, in French, four is four, uh, which is oven. And uh, anyways, I'm assuming that it's referring to the four third Elise on this chart. So I'm I'm really looking forward to stitching this. And thank you, Yvonne. Um, I have already ordered the floss and uh, it's Verdigree degree by Gentle Art. So in a way, I'm, I'm going to have a piece of you with me then. Thank you. And uh, yeah, again, there, there were some people brought their stashes of um, charts that uh, they uh, were going to pass along, kind of a freebie table, I guess. And um, I, I picked up also a little Willie's Quaker Square number five. And this is Monasterium Design. To be honest, I've never I've never heard of this before, but uh, it's a sweet little project. So I'm I'm looking forward to stitching that. Uh, something else. Uh, this this came to me from uh, Desiree. Desiree. Um, apologies if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Uh, from Oregon, and she really sweetly put together a little package for me that includes. Where am I going? An organ maggot or sorry, an organ uh, fridge magnet. And uh, yeah, just actually throw throw a magnet on the back of this and and it's a stitch minder. Voila, done. Or uh, sorry, a, a needle minder. And she made this little ornament for me on um, this uh, sweet design. Love the colors. Uh, featuring some highlights of Portland. She'd walked me through a little cable car and the river and uh, the bridges. And uh, yeah, so so thank you. Thank you. I really, I really appreciated that. Um, what else? Oh, so if you've watched any of my other videos, I, I've talked about uh, my knitting and timber yarns and... Heather from Timber Yarns so graciously um, passed along a gift for me um, through a fellow stitcher, Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. And uh, she gave me twin sock yarn. <laughs> it's uh oh, and a progress keeper in the colorway tequila. <laughs> so I think with this, I want to try stitching something other than socks. And uh, Dawn wore a beautiful sweater uh, that she knit. And um, it had the arms were banded with stripes of of this of uh, similar yarn to this in a in a color palette that she had designed with her fellow um, knitters. And um, yeah, so I might try a toque she recommended to knit a hat with it. So I'll, I'll give that a try and see how that goes. So thank you, Heather. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I will cherish and treasure this for sure. And Stanley, can you hear him meowing? Are you going to come up again? Are you going to come up again? No. Okay. Sorry for the pause. Sorry for the interruption. Um, timber yarns. So, so thank you, Heather. What else? Oh yeah, it was it was sweet. A lot of people um, shared some Canadian candies. Oh, we have an interloper. We have an interloper. Stanley, can you just? Carry on? No, no. Come on. Don't give them your ass. What, you want to sit on me? You actually want to sit on me. <sighs> Why don't you just lie down, okay? Sorry, guys. You know, when a cat disturbs you, you don't disturb the cat. <laughs> and this is far from disturbing. This is Stanley. He was born under our neighbor's deck. Uh, we got him. Uh, so his mom 
was a street cat, a stray, a uh, feral-ish. And um, so we got Stanley at about five or six weeks. And um, all of the other kittens from that litter found homes from other kind souls in the neighborhood. So it's kind of nice to know he's got some siblings around. So anyways, will you let me do the rest of my video? Okay. We need to talk about Lori. Oh. Let's talk about Lori. Lori came all the way from, there we are, Ohio. Such a sweet and charming and delightful woman. Um, little treasures she passed along, gifts from, gifts from um, Ohio. Here's her card, My Crazy Life. She has a YouTube video and uh, oh, some chocolate from a local chocolate company in Columbus. And uh, what a firecracker. What a firecracker. Her, her energy and her spirit just um, filled the space. Again, she didn't know a soul. She she did not know a single person present. She drove all the way up and down, and uh, from from Ohio, and uh, and I know she had a blast. And she uh, she went back home with a noggin full of memories and wonderful experiences, and um, an address book filled with new contacts. So, um, hi, Lori, if you're watching. And if you met Lori, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I have to say she she um, really lucked out. Well, lucked out <laughs> at the Smalls Exchange. She got, I think, the Smalls Exchange that took the prize for the weekend. And uh, I'll I'll let her talk about that. I can I can talk about mine. Um, again, part of the retreat we had. Uh, we had a smalls exchange. It wasn't um, mandatory or required. It was completely voluntary and optional. If you wanted to participate, you um, you made something small and you put it in a bag uh, without any kind of identifiable markings on it uh, to know that it was you. <laughs> and uh, But you did label it, whether it was sort of a, a more traditional or modern, um, design and uh, we placed them all on a table and then we got called up uh, table number by table number and had a chance to pick and uh, yeah it was really kind of fun it was, it was sort of a lottery and uh, we took our little goods back to the table to see what we won and uh, what I picked was uh, this brown paper bag Stanley uh, okay well, you just you just behave, okay? Uh, what I did, I picked this bag, a brown paper bag. It was taped closed and it was labeled traditional. And uh, inside, there was another paper bag, beautifully made, again with the with the words traditional on it. And inside this bag was uh, uh, this beautiful little pouch. Um, the woman who made my project here uh, is Jan. Um, here's her information about the project. And uh, she made me, oh, so a pouch, I was talking about the pouch in cork. This was done um, on her Cricut. It was printed on Cricut, and I, I didn't know actually the stuff that Cricut could do. And honestly, I, I don't want to know because it's just going to be another way for me to say goodbye to my money. So anyways, this cute little Notions pouch. And the Biscor New. Uh, this is a peppermint purple design, and around it, she stitched a hug from me to you. And, yeah, this was actually Jan's very first Biscornu that she made. And uh, 
I think what I will do is I'll keep it next to my own Biscornu. So thank you, Jan. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, beautiful. If you're not familiar with Peppermint Purple's design and um, you like doing kind of black work, backstitch, holbein, whatever you choose to call it, definitely check her out. Uh, she's got some beautiful stuff. And uh, least but last but not least, Canadian <laughs> maple syrup. Uh, there was a lot of uh, Canadian content going on this weekend and uh, absolutely did not have a problem with it one bit. Um, we love maple syrup in our house. Um, my partner, I swear, goes through a bottle a week. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is going to be right at home here. So thank you, Jan. Thank you so much. Um, maybe this is a good time to lead into my to my small. Obviously, I, I don't have it with me because I gave it away, but I did take a few pictures and I'll share somewhere around here. And um, I made a scissors case. It was, uh, I took a motif from Ink Circle's design um, called Hanky Pisanky and I, I showed it actually in another one of my videos. And uh, okay, are you gonna move? Oh, and now, now I'm covered in fur. Thank you, Stanley. Thank you. Okay, he's settled. He's going to lie down. Where was I? Oh, Hanky Pisanky. I, I took a motif from the design, and actually part of the chart included instructions on how to make a scissors case. So I ran with it, and I, I made a scissors case. It was my first one. I uh, used... I didn't use the called for. All of the floss I used was from my hand-dyed by Rolanda's uh, Floss of the Month Club collection. Um, yeah, these little projects are a great way to use up stuff like that. So so I enjoyed stitching it. I, I lined it with, uh, with the silk that I'd been carrying around with me for for decades, I think. I think it must be at least 20 years old. It's a, it's a Dupioni silk. It was just a small sort of a strip from a project. I honestly have no idea what, what I made from that. And, but I love the colors, so I hung on to it. And uh, yeah, so I lined it with the silk and I created a little scissor swab to attach to the scissors. I, I made the cord that went on it. I put a little magnet inside the, um, the end of the scissor swab. So you could kind of use it as a needle minder of sorts. Uh, maybe use it to pick up pins or needles off the floor. So yeah, I, I hope the recipient um, enjoys it and um, she finds good use for it. So so that was my start and I'm, I guess my finish and my full finish uh, that I'll talk about in this video. Um, maybe the last, the last bit of, uh, stitchy kindness, I guess, to talk about is the loot bag that we received from Caroline, uh, for the Stitch North retreat. I, I won't go into detail with everything that was included, but, uh, I do want to show a, a couple of things in here and... Let me see. Maybe we'll start with with this. Um, this is from Brennan Needle. Like I, I think I mentioned before, there were a few vendors uh, at the retreat. It, it was really wonderful to shop in person. Uh, there aren't. Uh, there's really only one local local needlework store, and it's even in another city. So it was really great to see a lot of these charts and designs and flosses and fabrics and notions in person. So, so Bryn and Needle from, uh, from Newfoundland were there. And uh, in the little loop bag, uh, they included a chart that was designed uh, for the event. I, I won't show it um, because it, it, is just, it is just a chart. Um, and it says, uh, stitched for a friend with, uh, with my heart in my hand. And uh, the package also include, oh, so Brennan Needle, 
go to their website. <laughs> um, so included in that little box was uh, some floss to use. Uh, they also do hand dyed uh, or over dyed cotton floss. So we've got two strands of floss. I think they have, they have such fun color names inspired by uh, local vernacular. <laughs> and uh, the dark one is called uh, Bell Island Ore. And the lighter one is called Dyes for a Drop of Jam. Uh, so that was sweet. Oh, and the linen that they provided was uh, called Tea and Croutons. So that's great. We can stitch a little project. And I will be talking more about Brin and Needle in my, in my regular floss tube video. Um, I, I absolutely fell in love with their stuff. And, uh, and they might have something to do with a giveaway that's coming up. So stay tuned for that. Another, another thing I wanted to mention, let me see. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to show you was the project bag that we got that uh, Caroline and her team at Evertote have made. And what blew me away <laughs> actually was, um, and you'll see this in my pack and prep video, um, I made a tote. I wanted uh, something for, for me where I could consolidate all of the little notions that I was bringing. So I, I made a tote. Where is it here? So this is Caroline's um, project bag she made. That's my tote bag. <laughs> Can you believe it? Like, I made this, I finished it about two or three days before the retreat. This we hadn't seen before and we got at the retreat. And I mean, if this isn't simpatico, I, I don't know what is, but this this completely blew me away. So I'll, I'll be opening this sucker up later. Um, but inside the tote bag, uh, we got also another chart, um, exclusive uh, for Stitch North 2022. It's by Han's Little X Stitch Treats, and Han is actually uh, Hannah. She's one of uh, one of um, Caroline's beyond stellar employees. Um, she she worked there the entire weekend, and uh, what a treasure, what a treat! And uh, so she designed an, a chart exclusive for the event, and. Um, I'll show you, I, I won't show you the chart, but I'll show you the finish. And this uh, this could tie in to, to my FFO for this video. It was, uh, it was stitched in two of uh, the Leo and Roxy colors, uh, Haystack, and of course the ubiquitous um, Falu Red, everyone's favorite red. And uh, yeah, so here's the finish. Uh, so Hannah designed the chart. I guess Caroline commissioned the chart. Hannah designed the chart. Um, Ellen stitched the chart. And I was uh, fortunate enough to have a chance to finish uh, the design. So I, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what I would do with it. And um, I think we wanted something quite representative of Canada and the North. And, uh, and I settled on the signature Buffalo plaid. Um, this was a traditional lumberjack shirt that uh, people wore in Canada. I know Buffalo plaid is, is common in many places, but for, for me anyways, I think for many people, Buffalo plaid very much has a, a Canadian or Northern vibe. So I used that as the, the back of the ornament. Uh, this, this was my first project where I did lacing. Um, I, so I wrapped, I wrapped the, de the design, the, the linen around a, a padded board and I laced the back and then I attached it to another board where I created a sleeve with the buffalo plaid and uh, put a little satin ribbon on, made a rosette, put a button in the center and, um, and Bob's your uncle. So, uh, uh, and so yeah, so it was fun to, to see it on display at the retreat. So yeah, so that was my, I guess my <laughs> fully finished object for this video.
So I, I think in the tradition of a, of a typical floss tube video, uh, we, we've already talked about stitchy kindness. Um, I shared a, a start and a finish and a fully finished, um, another fully finished object. And uh, maybe I can talk about a work in progress since, I mean, hello, <laughs> Stitch North, uh, the cross stitching, kind of supposed to be stitching. And I know there were varying levels of that happening. Like I said, it took me a while to get into the rhythm and the swing of things. And um, so I brought a few projects. The first one I started working on was Narnia, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. That was a stitchy kind of read along um, club. And there were a little too many color changes happening with that project. So I I put it aside and picked up a, a chart that I that I brought with me. I hadn't started, but I brought all the materials. It was kitted up and uh, it was called Sweet Pea. <laughs> so this does have, this had I think six colors and so it had six colors, but it didn't have frequent color changes. So, so it was much easier to stitch on this. Uh, so sweet pea, la di da. This is one of I think three bunnies uh, in this series. I, I have one that's a sampler um, bunny, and then there's a third one. I'm sorry, I can't I can't remember the name of it. So this. This was kind of <laughs> pushed on me by Betsy. Um, check out her floss tube. And uh, Nikki Noodle, check out her floss tube. Uh, they both stitched this and fully finished it. And uh, apparently bunnings are big this spring. And and by coincidence, the month of April, uh, the flower for the month of April is sweet pea. So I thought that it would be appropriate for me to stitch this project. So, so I did. And... Uh, I actually got more done than I thought. I used I used exactly the called for colors, and uh, it's a combination two DMCs, um, and uh, Weeks Dye Works. What CC? I can't remember. I can't remember what CC stands for. Color and cotton? No. I'll put it here. Sorry, guys. Uh, anyways, it just had six colors of floss, and uh, I used, what did I use? I used uh, Lakeside Linen, uh, 32 count in vintage tarnished, vintage tarnished silver, and uh, this is, this is how far I got. So, you can see, yeah, my, my start was zero. My start was a blank piece of linen. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with the level of progress. I mean, you can actually pretty much see the shape of it. Um, there's this front paw I still have to, I still have to do, and then take care of his face and his ears. And then I will sew it up uh, the way they recommended. Um, I, I don't know if I'll follow the same technique or the approach. Um, Nikki said she did something different. So I think I'll, I'll try her approach with this. So yeah, maybe if I, if I really work hard and get my act together, I'll have uh, a finish to show you when I manage to get around uh, filming my, my next regular floss tube. So yeah, that's uh, that's my work in progress. Uh, Hall, let's uh, let's talk about Hall. I, as I mentioned before, there were vendors, and uh, it was wonderful to see and to have. It, it wasn't the retreat wasn't about the vendors. It was about the stitching. However, it was really nice to take a break and um, pop out of the room and take a look at what uh, these vendors were offering. Um, Three of the, well, four in total were there for the entire retreat, and uh, a few more had rotated, and uh, I will list them all in the drop drop down box below. Uh, some of them, um, well, most of them I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll be familiar with. Uh, of course, uh, we had um, Evertote, 
Evertote and Leo and Roxy. I did I did pre-order. I did pre-order some floss and uh, and it was hand delivered by Caroline at the retreat and it is a Leo and Roxy conversion of the Rosewood Manor chart uh, Winter Quakers and uh, I've got the fabric I've got the chart now I have the floss and uh, I look forward to stitching this um, yeah beautiful beautiful colors. So that I, I picked up at, uh, at the retreat. What I bought at the retreat was, of course, some more Falu Red chalkboard. Uh, this is everyone's uh, favorite new black. Uh, it is it is dark. It's I, I wouldn't necessarily call it black black. Um, it does, and I wouldn't call it variegated. It does have some tonal variations in it. Um, I think uh, it'll be nice to give um a monochrome sampler a bit of uh, or a design um a bit more character and depth uh, so i picked up these two flosses and uh there weren't any windows in the room well there there was a big window but uh, the curtains were drawn so um so i think i was attracted to the really bright and saturated uh, colors here so i picked up a limelight i picked up a blue lagoon uh there was another, oh, sorry, <laughs> there's another color here, a uh, pickled pear. Uh, so I'm, I'm really going to have fun finding a project uh, st to, to stitch with those. And oh, 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 and I don't have any Leo and Roxy linen. And um, they had a beautiful selection. This is a 32 count. Um, it says Weigard base. I can tell by the, um, by the selvage edge. Um, 32 count, it's called peanut brittle <laughs> and, uh, check it out if you, if you can. And if it's online, uh, through the evertote.ca website. And, um, I, I know a lot of you had commented on, was the gingerbread linen that I had shown and and this very much reminds me of the of the gingerbread linens so I'm really going to enjoy stitching something on this one so I'm yeah I'm looking forward to this one and uh, what else oh right needle minders the um uh, the needle minder lady <laughs> Karen of uh, Rocky Mountain needle minders was there uh, she was there the entire weekend and uh I'll just uh, all these magnets are sticking. Hold up her business card. Uh, Rocky Mountain Needle Minders. Uh, you can find uh, find them on Facebook. And I picked up the sweetest little dark sapphire blue alligator crocodile. I'm I don't know my alligators and crocodiles too well to know the difference but uh, I saw it online and I thought it was really sweet and had to have it and I also picked up uh, a television with a test pattern uh, I, I can't believe well actually I can believe and it's a little bit sad but there are now entire entire generations of of um, people who have no, who, who have not experienced this while watching television. Uh, I was joking with some people uh, at the retreat about, you know, growing up and remembering, you know, our when channels went off the air, <laughs> and uh, at, at least in Canada, they would play Oh Canada, maybe uh, God Save the Queen, and a test pattern would appear uh, when when the programming went off the air. Yeah, you don't. Know, you don't see that around anymore. Um, it would be a cute screensaver or wallpaper, but yeah, good times, good memories. So uh, I'm going to enjoy having that on a project as I work. Hey guys, apologies for the interruption. I uh, had to take the dog for a walk and my phone died. So let's hope we'll be okay for now. I, I did have a look at how much I recorded and it says almost two hours and that's not going to work for me. So I think that uh, this video is going to have a lot of edits 
I'll try to cut it down as much as I can to uh, make it as interesting as possible while keeping the core and essence of uh, the wonderful time I had at the retreat. And um, I, I did have just one last thing. I think I was going to show you a, some more haul, uh, just the last bit of haul that I that I wanted to share with you. Again, it was from um, Brennan Needle. And uh, I, again... Um, We've had a long, cold, dark winter, and uh, I've been craving color, so I found color. <laughs> uh, this one is called Holidays Around the Bay. Newfie Slush is this color, and this is Valentine's Around the Bay. Um, Muffy Cakers? Well... <laughs> If you want to Google it, go for it. Yeah, but I've never seen floss like this before. I, I love that highlighter, neon yellow. And uh, there's a lot of speckling. And uh, so it's not exactly a graduated color or an ombre. It's those beautiful little flecks of green on the yellow and white. I'm not sure what I'm going to stitch with it, but I'm definitely going to have fun with it. And I picked up some linen as well to go with it. I don't know. Yeah, this is the same. This is the same lin, uh, linen that we saw in the kit that they included in the, the welcome package for the retreat. And I also picked up. I couldn't resist. I, I couldn't resist. Um, I've been watching Michelle stitch these and I picked up uh, Quirky Quakers, Mythical Creatures. This one has a uh, Loch Ness Monster. It has a unicorn <laughs> and uh, it's got, um, what are they calling this here? It's a Sasquatch. There we go. Is that better? Ugh. It's a Sasquatch, that uh, little bonus mini chart, it, you can turn it into a Yeti. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to stitching these. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you'll be seeing more of um, Brenna Needle in uh, an upcoming video very soon. And um, yeah, so that's, so that's that. Uh, thank you. Thank you for hanging in there and for tolerating all my edits and my ramblings. And I especially want to say thank you to Caroline McNeil and her wonderful team from Everto, who um, they were on site to help out with everything. Hannah and Matt, it was really great meeting you. I enjoyed um, meeting Carrie from Leo and Roxy, and uh, I think I might have scared her a little bit by by threatening her with uh, an apprenticeship. <laughs> I, I don't know a lot about dyeing flosses and fabrics, and I'd love to learn. I'm, I'm fascinated by all of that. So I said, I'm going to come apprentice for you. <laughs> and mm, yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you. A uh, thank you to all the other fellow stitchers. God, this feels like the Academy Awards and the, they've started playing the music already. So thanks for watching and tune in to my um, pack and prep video. And I'm going to have another, I, I don't know when that's going to be up. I'm going to have another one, just a regular floss tube as well, where we're just going to go over the basics and catch up. And then we'll be back on track. All right. Take care, guys. See you around.